I was thinking of adding the revamped like neon sign up there. But I do want like a nice chair here, maybe some plants. I'm not really like a plant person, but. Check out my new dragon plant. Actually, it's called a corn plant, but we're gonna go with dragon, okay? Because dragon sounds that much more epic, so we'll go with that. Hello, welcome to the brand new revamped studio, revamped 2.0. Bear with me as I experiment around different sets and moving things around. I'm actually going to move my plants over here to the left side or your right side and then add in a TV in this blank space. Hopefully, I think that's gonna, I think it's gonna look good. Maybe add a little coffee table here and then add my iPad so I can kind of just shift through slides and talk about stuff, show them on screen and it's gonna be that much cooler. I think, we're still playing around with it. However, this area looks so podcasty for those that are listening in. I added in some black panels behind me, have this nice green chair that I am comfortably sitting on, have a microphone stand that I was going to throw away but decided not to and good thing I didn't because now it's come into handy. It's come in handy, I am killing my verbiage right now. Black and white walls are here, mm, I'm just loving my new space. I can't wait to get you all a full studio tour but I'm still waiting on a couple other things to come in before that comes into play. But for now, it is time to get back to work, to doing what I love. And today, I want to teach you, not just tell you, but teach you how to book clients more frequently. And this is going to be specific to the board gaming niche, but the same principles would apply across all types of photography. For all of those that are new here, for all those that are joining in, first off, welcome. Hi, I do all types of photography and videography, but my main focus is board games and revamped as implied in the name is a podcast designed to elevate your board game content creation experience or just photography experience in general. If you're interested in photography, if you're interested in videography, in board games, pretty much what my entire channel is about, then stick around because revamped is here to teach you all things related to all of those three. When I started all of this, I managed to book three clients actually in one year. Sorry, I know I mentioned one year in the title, but one year is just much easier and it just goes more seamlessly than Three, it just looks messy with three. So I want one, okay? So forgive me for that. However, I currently now have one to three a week for about four months out until October, one to three clients a week. And something I really wished I had when starting to make videos, starting to take pictures, was just a guide. It was just some tips and tricks on you know how to sell and market the things that you make. But unfortunately, no one in the board game industry at the time, or you know currently now that, that I know of at least, um, teaches you how to actually book publishers and how to get publishers to you know pay for the hard work that you put in, how to you know help progress your hobby transition into something that is much more than that. So in today's podcast, I'm gonna teach you exactly how I did that with seven principles. Number one, avoid reviews. Now hear me out for a second. I'm gonna do an entire episode dedicated to explaining all that, but for now, reviews currently do not get paid for. On the publisher side, they don't really pay for reviews. Most videos that you see on Kickstarter will be everything outside of reviews. Tutorials, playthroughs, overviews, previews, those are all the types of videos that you'll be making. Therefore, if your goal is to get paid for your work, you kinda wanna avoid reviews. At least put them on like the lowest priority. I don't mean like to not make reviews ever, but to deprioritize them. The first principle I want you to consider is to pick a type of video that you enjoy producing and stick with that until you feel confident. Until you feel confident in making that type of video well and efficiently. Now what does this mean? If a publisher were to come up to you and ask you to make a video for them, you're gonna be ready. There is no hesitation. You will just be ready to full send and make content for them. That's what confidence means in content creation. On top of that, efficiency means that you can make that content in a reasonable amount of time for both meeting publisher deadlines, if they have a certain Kickstarter to meet, or and or your work-life balance. You don't want to be spending three or four days making one video or a week like me, and try to narrow it down to as little time spent as possible without sacrificing quality. That is key here. You do not want to sacrifice quality. Now let's go ahead and break down the types of videos and their pros and cons so you can see which ones best suit your channel, which one best suits your brand. Let's talk about tutorials first. These are, these take ages to make. They are the most time consuming type of board gaming content to produce. Rodney from Watch It Played, if you're watching this, I have so much respect for you in making tutorials all the time because I, I have no idea how he does it, okay? He has done it since the beginning of time. He still does it now. Paul Grogan, like there are so many amazing tutorial 
creating content creators that just, man, the level of respect I have for all of them has just skyrocketed because they, they have the patience to do it and it just takes a lot of time to do it. If you've never made a tutorial before, try it, see what it's like. But the key thing to know here is that you have to spend a lot of time knowing the rules in and out. You are distilling them down in video form and then filming B-roll takes a lot of time. If you want to get paid for your tutorials, here are tips on how to market yourself in the board game tutorial niche. Fast. That is the key word here, fast. You don't have to speak as quickly as you can, that's not what I mean, but rather you want to cut the fat when making that video. Whatever you don't need to mention, cut it out. Don't mention it. Even all the little details, even saying things like, put the coins here on the table, then put the resources here on the table, then put this miniature here on the table. Instead, just show one shot showing all the components on the table and say, put these components on the table. Stuff like that, you can just totally cut out and simplify all the way down to all the way down to that much. You also wanna keep in mind that video tutorials are often complementary to the rule book. They don't really replace the rule book, but you should still keep your overarching goal, which is to replace the rule book. But one way you can achieve both is by cutting the fat. You wanna keep your overall goal, like I only want people to just watch this video and be able to play the game, but still, Remember that your video is trying to supplement the rulebook, which means you don't have to mention every single little detail. People will still look the rulebook anyway. They're still gonna scan through it, and sometimes our videos come out before the rulebooks are even released. So there's that as well. Just keep those in mind. Another tip I have for you for making board games is liven it up. Show that you are excited. Show that you are genuinely excited to talk about this game because you are, you know? You love doing this and all that energy will always outweigh all the fancy footage that you put into your production. Trust me. Speaking of production, you also want to go the extra mile though in showcasing the game and make it distinguishing. You wanna distinguish it in a lot of different ways. I have a ton of videos on my channel talking all about filming B-roll and stylizing your footage, all that. You can definitely check it out there. Another thing I wanna point out about tutorials though is to also include summaries. You don't wanna just throw information at everyone. You want to include recaps here and there and put yourself in your viewer's shoes. Am I really gonna remember this entire setup from just watching this video. One way to help distill that, one way to help you know, re-encapsulate all the information into your viewers' minds is to include summaries. Put yourself in their shoes. So to summarize, see what I did there? To summarize what we just talked about, you want to make sure that you're only including the essential details when talking about the game when you are doing a tutorial. You want to show your enthusiasm, you want to show your excitement for the game because it makes it that much more digestible for viewers to watch. You also want to include as we're doing now, recaps. Immerse yourself in your audience's shoes. These tips are gonna make your videos that much better. They will make publishers want you to present their games. Okay, let's talk about previews next. If you're starting and you don't have copies of certain board games yet, definitely try Facebook groups for board games. They're always looking for content creators to preview their games. Now this is a great spot because you have specific Kickstarter audiences that are looking at your video. So even if you're not getting paid for it just yet, it's a great place to start. Previews are the fastest to make. I'm not saying that they are easy to make. I'm not saying that they are quick to make, but they are the fastest out of all the videos that we talk about to make. There you go, if you are starting and if you're thinking about these general categories about board game content creation, I think previews are a great entry level content to make for content creators. Previews get you used to talking about games, about talking about general game principles, about you know showcasing and highlighting different parts that people would want to see about that game since they're thinking about purchasing it. And of course, previews are your time to shine for Kickstarter. Because previews are shown to such a niche audience, this is when I go like all out because everyone that's watching your video ideally is interested in that particular game. So every time I did a Kickstarter preview in the past, even Kickstarter previews now, I really just you know step it up to the highest level I can. And this is key to landing your first client because think about it. Everyone that's coming to watch a preview is likely coming from their Kickstarter campaign page, which is being promoted across all different types of platforms, Facebook, Instagram, their own websites, uh, Twitter, all that is directing everyone to the Kickstarter campaign page. When you have a video that is up on that campaign page, you need to distinguish yourself and show people that not only this is a great way to present the game, but also the more traction you get to your video, the more likely publishers are going to book you again for sequential 
board games. Or also, don't forget that other publishers are looking at campaign games as well because they're looking to see what you know different campaigns have done well. And of course, your video is going to be on that page. So this is a great time. This is the perfect time for you to go all out and make your videos shine. This is why I often pair my cinematic showcases with previews because they are both attention getters. The cinematics get people interested in the game and then hopefully they stay to see what the game is all about during the preview. The intro cinematic is a whole other ball game to give you tips about but let's talk about the preview itself. For these I always highlight the answer to this very question. What are you doing on your turn? That is the golden question of my channel. I'm always talking about this question throughout a ton of videos but it still reigns true here. That's the whole point of the game, right? So I keep it simple. I introduce what the game is about and ultimately it is a preview. So what can you expect from the game? I would highly suggest that you keep all of these key questions in mind when you're thinking about making your preview. What questions do you want to answer? You know, you want to put yourself in the backer's shoes. If you're able to fulfill these questions in your preview, guess what? Backers will subscribe to your channel. More and more people will see your work. Maybe that publisher comes back to you a second time and just asks you to do it again. But this time, pay for your work. And let's go and wrap up with playthrough tips. If you're doing playthroughs, the key here is to be highly interactive. Even if you're doing, you know, solo playthroughs, that's fine. I do solo playthroughs all the time. When you're doing those playthroughs, what I try to keep in mind myself is to always ask the audience questions. You're trying to make it interactive, right? You want to talk to the camera. You want to make sure that your thoughts and discussions, decisions are communicated very well in your video, in your playthrough video. Now, I also like to start off my cinematic playthroughs by teaching really quickly, just so everyone is on board and kind of on the same page. These take the playthroughs themselves take almost as long as tutorials because you still have to know the game in and out. You have to make sure that you know the rules because people will always call you on it and that is totally fine. I enjoy being, I don't enjoy being called out, but I respect being called out because obviously you don't want to, you know, pass on misinformation. The only reason I don't enjoy it is because I don't like messing up, but I really, really am thankful for everyone that calls me out on it. That's why you really have to know your playthroughs and your games really well when doing a playthrough. And that's how they mimic tutorials in that sense. They both take a while to make. But unlike tutorials, you don't have to film anywhere near as much B-roll as you do for tutorials because all of it is done in essentially one take. You have your overhead camera and then you have your main camera done. The key here is to make sure you actually enjoy the game and make sure you are genuinely having fun with it because if you're not, it's not gonna be an inviting experience and it just doesn't look fun to play, right? So make sure you choose a game that you enjoy. Make sure you choose a game that you're gonna have fun with. This is what sells it to publishers because remember, our ultimate takeaway from today is that we want to book clients and we want to book more and more clients. Ultimately, they want the game to look fun to play. If your game doesn't look fun to play and you don't enjoy it, how are they gonna sell it? How are they going to book you for it? Now, I know that's simple and it sounds obvious, but sometimes when you're in the middle of all of this, when you're filming and scripting and doing all these things, you kind of forget that. I forget that all the time, which is why I try to mention it often and I try to uh, ground myself in those questions. So just remind yourself of the ultimate end goal. Okay, all of that that we just talked about was related to only principle number one. Again, avoid reviews, which of course doesn't mean, you know, don't make them. It just means that you want to put them on the lowest priority list if your goal is to get paid by publishers to make board game content. Now, how are you all doing? Hopefully I didn't bombard you with too much information, but the key here, the key question I wanna ask you is, are you pumped? Are you ready to make some content? Come on. Hold on though, because I still need to arm you with six more principles. Principle number two, now that you've settled on the type of content that you wanna make for YouTube, now you want to pick a social media platform to promote said content. It almost goes to waste if you don't you know, promote your videos if you only post videos and don't market them on a different social media platform. If you enjoy photography, your best bet, Instagram. Naturally, that's where I get most of my interested clients from because they see my grid. And, you know, if you like taking photos on top of that, it doesn't hurt to go ahead and build up your photo portfolio as well. Having good photos, and never a bad thing. Trust me, I, I never even imagined myself to be a photographer to begin with. So, if you haven't tried taking photos, if you haven't tried taking good pictures of board games, try it out. You might like it much more than you expect. Again, I have tons of tips and tricks on my channel all about photography if you wanna get started with that. Now, Twitter is great because there are a ton of publishers on there. Twitter also has this function that I recently realized, but 
it's where like people can save you under specific lists. Like sometimes people will save me as like a content creator list, which is awesome. On top of that, there are a ton of publishers on there. Publishers really seem to enjoy Twitter because I think it has like this wildfire effect, right? People can see one post and then they retweet it. And then if one person retweets it, now their entire audience of followers can see that as well. So I can see why Twitter is so popular because it has that traction built into it. Basically, Twitter is great because a whole slew of people can see it and then it just trickles down. Facebook, I'm not the biggest fan of. And from my experience, it's not as good as the other platforms to market yourself. But if you want to find people looking for game coverage, that is a solid spot to find. I see publishers posting every single week looking for content creators to cover their games coming out. So that is a great spot to look for if you're starting out. Um, TikTok is the new thing right now. Great place to just to just post, honestly. I feel like TikTok is almost a lottery because once you hit it with one post, then your stuff kind of just really gains traction. But I am no expert on TikTok. I just know that it is a great time to capitalize on that platform. Three creators that come to mind right away that like seriously brighten up my feed by far, like every single day. They're actually part of the reasons why I'm not as productive. Danielle from TikTok. I'll post their info here. Danielle. Um, Plumpy Thimble and Ryan and Phil, those three. Follow them if you want to have a happy feed. Okay, where are we at right now? You picked your type of content. You promoted it across social media. What's next? Principle number three. What's worked for me is to set gear goals. I know a ton of people are always like, oh, it's not all about the gear. That's fair. It's not. However, the ones that are saying that, and again, I am not... I'm never attacking anyone. I'm just attacking the concept itself. But typically the ones that are saying that are the ones that already have a large audience. When you have no audience or if you have like a very, very small audience, that doesn't come into play in the same way. Let me explain. You have less control of how big your audience is going to be. You do though, you do have control of your own production quality. Not only does it give you a path to follow, but for me, it kept me motivated, especially when I didn't have videos and content not work out as well in the very early days when I like went all out for videos and they'd get like five views and I'd get like one subscriber a week. That can easily just destroy your drive. So I would actually set, you know, goals for gear, meaning, OK, next I'm going to save up to get a second camera because it's just gonna help me make videos better. It's gonna help me make videos faster. And then from there, okay, now I need a better microphone because my audio quality is just, it's killing me and I can't stand all this echo and stuff. Let's go ahead and get a second zoom lens so I don't waste time switching out my prime lens after every single shot. Let's get backlights to make the B-roll really stand out. Those layers, all those goals that are set and that are eventually met, they are investments because the more you get better at doing this, then the better your editing and the better your gear and the more you'll be able to create footage and videos that publishers are going to want to book you for. If anything, for board game videos now, now is the best time to increase your production quality because production quality and board games don't fully go hand in hand yet. Tech reviews, for instance, production quality isn't going to make you stand out because everyone's videos are amazing and highly produced. Board games aren't there just yet. So I'm not saying to empty out your bank accounts and buy freaking red Komodo dragons and that's a really fancy camera, by the way, um, and all this crazy aperture gear. But I am saying that maybe setting little goals here and there to invest in things that will motivate you to create content with higher quality and efficiency will be a good thing. Why? Because that is a variable that you can control and that can help you book clients who will eventually pay for, hopefully, the work that you put in and like the gear that you've invested in as well. Uh, one of my photographer friends and I used to joke, she used to say that we work to invest into our gear. So it's true, you know, pretty much what we work for is for the gear, but hopefully it is a great long-term investment. Now, let's move on to principle number four. This is a good one. I'm sure that you haven't heard of it just yet because it's something that I've just recently started doing. Social media platforms, or sorry, social media promos. I'm taking this one straight from Sam from Load the Board. If you're watching this, my friend, hi. Thank you for your wonderful idea, Sam. Um, in this recent short film that we all did, he said that one great tip that he had was to see a need and fill a need, and that 
can't reign any more true, not only for you know this video and this principle, but also for why I started my channel to begin with. This idea is the epitome of how I booked clients. I saw the need to elevate board game content. It took me a few years, but once I built up this library of videos that addressed that need, now that is something that is starting to become the norm. Now, instead of having just you know one or two publishers interested in commercials, now I have four months of publishers weekly that want to see that. That is the power of fulfilling a need. Social media promos are a current example of that. If you followed my Instagram for some time, I've actually always made them um, sporadically, but I started making these 15 second, you know, highlight reels of a game. Recently, I kind of just did one for fun and then a publisher asked me, hey, is this something that you can make for us? And from there, once I posted one thing about it, which was the Kingless post, you can go back on my Instagram to see it. Um, I posted one about Kinglist, and then within a week, I booked 12 more social media promos, which is insane. You know, if you want a breakdown of how to make these social media promos, I can definitely do that. I can show you exactly how I make one. Let me know down in the comments below. I'd love to show you. And if you are enjoying this video, if you're enjoying this podcast, please consider subscribing to the channel. Share it. Write a review for me uh, on Apple Podcasts if you really, really enjoy it. And maybe, just maybe, um, check out my store, get a shirt get a pin, all that goes a very long way in helping me continue to do this, to continue to provide really helpful tips and insight to things that haven't been addressed yet in our niche. Plus, I love seeing you all wear the awesome gear that I've designed. Now, <laughs> okay, let's move on to principle number five, recycle your content. Now, there's a difference between reposting versus recycling. To recycle your content, that means, let's say you just made a tutorial on Stardew Valley. Use a B-roll from that tutorial and stitch it together to make a highlight video for Instagram Reels. Tag publishers, you know, down the line after you post them for quite some time, you know, tag them on Twitter with that highlight video. If you give your videos some time to breathe, not only does it accumulate views, accumulate comments, all that, but it gives publishers a little nudge like, hey, I made this video for your game. Do you like it? You want to work together? Don't actually, don't actually say that, but that's what it can imply and it'll get them more inclined to work with you. Also keep this in mind too. Sometimes I actually get publishers reaching out to me saying, hey, by the way, I've been meaning to reach out to you, but we just launched this Kickstarter and haven't gotten this chance. They're really busy people too. So sometimes they don't necessarily see your stuff on the first tag or the first post, but they might get a chance the next time. So recycle your content and find different purposes for them, repurpose them. That has saved me a ton of time and also has given reminders to publishers for reaching out to you as well. On to principle number six, to book more clients. You honestly just need to get your feet wet. If you book one and have a very good relationship with them, you over deliver your work, you make it good, you make it solid, you make it something that they wanna rebook you with you, you give them a taste, a full delicious meal of what you can do, they're gonna wanna rebook you. And not only do they want to rebook you, but also they have their own audience and maybe by word of mouth, they you know get to other people, they get to other publishers. Really keep at it, you know, keep asking yourself how you can make your content better. How can you make it more tailored for specific games, for specific publishers? How do you make your video, your content, more of a product that people want to buy, more relatable, so it keeps people watching? Take a look on publisher websites and look at their feed, look at their Instagram, look at their Twitter, because that's going to give you a really good idea of their overall aesthetic, and if you can match their vibe, if you can match their aura, if you can simulate the overarching goals that they have, then it's very, very likely that they're going to book you because you would get along with them. This is what's going to lead you to book one out of many, many clients. And I'm going to finish off with this last one. It's a good one. It's a very good one that all stems off of number six. The final principle that I have for you today, the one that has worked for me, is that for your very first few publishers, offer a low value, something that is digestible for someone to buy. Let's say you make a, let's say you make a five minute tutorial for a very light game. Send it to a publisher and obviously word it much more professionally and better than I'm going to tell you right now in a relatable sense. But say, you know, hey, I made this tutorial for you. I would love for you to put it on your main page and it's something that, you know, people can learn really quickly with. I can sell it to you for, say, 200 bucks. Target games that don't have that specific type of video yet. Remember, see a need, fill a need. Game is missing playthrough, do one for them, sell for 100 bucks. 
don't make it go live on your channel yet. I wouldn't risk this much with a playthrough because I feel like with playthroughs, it definitely requires a bigger audience, but tutorials, product photos, and previews are probably your best bet for doing this. Yes, it is a risk, but you gotta take, you gotta take a risk in order for you to get your feet wet. And then when you do book it and you put a sponsored by, you know, et cetera, hopefully that gains traction when you post it on your channel and then, you know, you gain authority and all those other things. 100 bucks, 200 bucks is way better than zero for a video, right? So try to lowball it from the beginning if you're starting out. 50, 100, 200 if you want to range. Um, better to lowball it from the beginning and then, of course, steadily increase your prices as you go. So let's go ahead and recap everything from today's insane library of tips and helpful guides to book one client and hopefully a line of many, many more. Keep all of these in mind. One, pick a target video, playthroughs, tutorials, previews. Stick with those until you excel at them, until you are confident in making them efficiently. Avoid reviews because those are not paid for. Two, promote your content so that it gets more eyes on that video. Choose a platform or platforms to market it on. You don't want to choose too many. Ideally, just choose one or two to start out with, see which ones you like. Remember what each platform excels in. Instagram for photos and vertical videos, Twitter for retweets, Facebook, of course, for finding publishers and Kickstarter previews, TikTok because it's trending. Three, set gear goals or any type of goal. Any type of goal that will get you motivated to create more content. Goals are going to increase inevitably your production quality. They're going to distinguish your work and keep people wanting more. Number four, Social media promos and fulfilling needs. Social media promos are highlight reels for Instagram and Twitter. Again, let me know in the comments below if you wanna see um, a tutorial on how I make those. But in general, principle number four, I would say is to figure out what board game publishers are missing and fill in their missing content. Moving on to number five, recycle your content. It gives life back to your old work that you've done and it also kind of just gives a little nudge to publishers to work with you. Number six, try your best to land one client. If you land one, you are much more likely to keep landing more and more. Over deliver on that first client, make a good relationship with them and you are set up. You are set up for many more. And finally, number seven, offer a low value to get your very first few clients to kind of just get the ball rolling. You can steadily increase that price over time, but you know, some money for the hard work that you've done is better than none. So keep that in mind. And hopefully it trickles down from there and just keeps landing you more. That, my friends, is episode 16 of the new and improved revamped 2.0 how to go from one client a year to one client per week. My experience on that, tips and tricks on how I did that, things that I hope, that I really, really hope will help you as well. I also hope that you all enjoyed this video, found it helpful, like the brand new space, my new dragon plant. <laughs> let me know if you, let me know if you end up booking clients um, using the tips that I presented here and I'll catch you all on the flip side.